Hello you all, welcome back into the channel. Welcome into this message. I'm really excited that you're here and I want you to listen to the very end because I know that if you're led here, I know that if you're listening to this right now that there's something in it for you and it's really going to unlock some things for you. It's really going to be something that propels you into your next season, into your next level of glory. That's very specific for this message. Not every message is something that's going to propel you forward, but this one is definitely uh, one of those messages. So I want you to listen to the end. It's been a while since I broke down the different uh, phases and stages that God will take every believer through, but on this message, I want to do that. So I want to break down, um, you know, uh, Egypt, the wilderness, and the promised land, and what each of those phases mean, because I talk about it a lot, and not everyone knows how it actually works, because when we talk about Egypt, especially when believers talk about Egypt, we talk about the wilderness, and we talk about the promised land, many people think back to biblical history, and they think, how can I be going, how can I be in an Egypt season? How can I be in a wilderness? How can I be in the promised land when we're in modern day? And the thing is, is that when we look at biblical history, it's the uh, the scripture scriptures are timeless. It is something that is still relevant till today, and we can apply it to what's going on in our life right now. So, when people talk about an Egypt season, or when I talk about an Egypt season, it's specifically a season of bondage. These are all mindsets, by the way. Egypt is a mindset. The wilderness is a mindset, and the promised land is a mindset. It's a maturing journey, and I say that all the time because God is taking you through maturing phases. So. Speaking to those of you who are in Egypt season, it just means that it's a state of bondage. It means that it's a mindset of bondage. So you may be experiencing, and I'm going to explain to you what you may be experiencing so you can know if you're in this season or not, and what God is requiring of you next. I outlined this in the Promise and Roadmap, by the way, but I don't go in as much detail because it's just one quick roadmap that you can look at for five minutes to help you kind of get a quick understanding. If you're interested in that, there's a link below for you to grab that and download that. But to expand on that a little bit more, if you're in an Egypt season, what it will typically look like is you're in a state of bondage. And if you're there, it's not to shame you and don't let the enemy shame you or anything like that. Don't let anyone judge you for your state. But I want to bring you to a state of awareness so you can understand where you're at in life and what God is requiring of you to get to your next level. So if you're in an Egypt season, typically what that means is that you're in a state of bondage. Maybe you're tied to uh, worldly sins. Maybe you have certain addictions, um, whether that's addictions concerning drugs, addiction, addictions concerning sexual addictions, lust, gluttony, food addictions. There's just certain things that are tying you, like it's weighing you down. And it's almost like you're in a repeating cycle. You may, um, you may find yourself being compelled to do certain things. Maybe you lack self-control. Maybe you find yourself um, just tied to certain things. Another thing that you'll start to realize if you're in an Egypt season, or maybe you don't realize, but I want to outline to you, is that you're surrounded by people who were also in bondage. Like if you look at your surroundings, if you look at the people that you hang around, if you look at the people who are drawn to you, people who are naturally attracted to you, they also are in bondage. They also have addictions. They also are tied to things. They also are um, allowing, they also are feeding their flesh, right? They also are very worldly. They also have a very surface level of thinking. And so these are the people that are attracted to you. These are the people that are in your um, atmosphere. They are also in an Egypt season or in a season of bondage. Um, and so what God is wanting to do is transition you. He's wanting to shift you out of that into a wilderness season. And I'm going to get into what exactly a wilderness season is because many people think it's a bad thing. And the wilderness is not a bad thing. And I'm going to explain to you why. So yes, if you're in an Egypt season, it typically means that you're in a state of bondage and it's a way of thinking. God wants to break you out of that. And how does he do that? This is really important. I want, to, I want you to listen carefully here and I want you to listen um, closely. How does God break you out of an Egypt season? He will send people into your life. He will send a very specific kind of person into your life. These are people who are not, they're not necessarily in a promised land. Maybe they are in their own wilderness, whatever, but they are on a higher level of thinking than you are. Not necessarily, they may not even have more money than you have, right? They may not even be wealthy, but in their mind, they're on a higher level of thinking than you are. Why has God sent certain people into your life like this? To pour revelation into you, to pour knowledge into you, because that is what's going to bring you out of an Egypt season. Because if you, the reason that most people are in an Egypt season is because they just simply don't know, right? 
This is why the word of God says, and all by getting good understanding. They don't have the information and they don't have the knowledge to do better. This is why people say, if you know better, do better. This is why people say ignorance. I think the phrase is ignorance is bliss, right? Um, but people are in bondage and people are tied to sin. People are tied to addictions. People are in the world because they simply just don't know any better. Unless they want to. And even if they want to, it's because they don't have enough information to know that they should want better. So God will send people into your life if you're in this season, a season of bondage. And the, the goal is to pour more wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and revelation into you for you to get a light bulb moment and say, aha, there's something else out there. There's something different out there. Because if you don't know that there's a better life outside of the bondage, you're not going to reach for it. You're kind of trapped in this um, container, if you will, of bondage and other people who are um, also doing the same thing. This is why there's a phrase that says that you are who you hang around. So what God wants to do is send a person into your life, pour more information into you that you never knew was possible so that you can start reaching up. You can start reaching up mentally to their level of thinking. And when you get to that place, you immediately transition into a wilderness season. Then you begin to start thinking, there's something more for me out there. There's something better for me out there. And I see these people that I'm hanging around that are also in bondage, that are also in a wilderness, uh, also in an Egypt season, and they're not on that level of thinking, but I want that. So immediately what we begin to happen is your way of thinking will elevate to a person of higher understanding. And those people who are in bondage will eventually either fall out of your life or you will no longer desire to hang around them. You'll no longer want them in your life anyway. So they'll fall out of your life and you will immediately enter into a wilderness season and this is a season of transition. Many people think a wilderness season is bad and it's not bad. The purpose of a wilderness season is just to be a short period in time to transition you onto your promised land. Um, and so what God desires for you to do is just go through this quick transition season so that you can get to the promises of God, the land that he's prepared for you, flowing of milk and honey. So if you're in a wilderness season right now, what you are probably most likely experiencing is you are alone. You're not surrounded by people who are trapped in worldly things. You're not surrounded by people who are very successful in, in their life and people who are very um, intelligent or people who are very knowledgeable about certain things. You're just alone. You're very like you're very alone. Everyone has left your life. Everyone's kind of fell out of your life. Maybe you've separated from your family. You have... Um, separated from your old friends, you don't have new friends, and it's because you're in an in-between state. You don't fit in with people who are in, from your past, and you don't fit in with people who are in your future, but you're kind of like floating in this in-between space, and it's because God is stripping you of things. He's stripping you of your old mindset. He's stripping you of everything from your past because you can't take it with you into the promised land. It's a separation season. It's a separation and transition season. So what will, what will prolong this process, and we've seen this happening with the Hebrew Israelites, is that the um, desire to go back will prolong the wilderness season. And we see this happen all the time. If you just look at people's lives, the desire to go back to old friendships, old relationships, old ways of thinking, old habits, old addictions, just not wanting to let those things go. Many people during this season put up a resistance against God when they should be putting up a resistance against the devil. They put up a resistance against where God is trying to take them um, as if he's Satan or something. But the thing is, is that God is trying to strip you and it, it's a very, what makes it so hard and painful is that people say the wilderness season is a very hard season and they don't like it and, and there's a very negative connotation to being in a wilderness season because it's very uncomfortable because you're being stripped of everything that you thought was right, everything you thought you knew, all of the things that you were familiar with, all the things that you were comfortable with. Um, you're just being, that's being ripped from you. And so it's very uncomfortable and you immediately start to feel, um, like you're in this state of unfamiliarity, that you're in this state of, um, not knowing what's ahead. And it's because God is leading you there, right? It's because God wants you to rely on him only. He's teaching you to rely on him only in a wilderness season because when you go into the promised land as a, as a child of God, and I'm going to explain to you what the promised land looks like. It's not what you think it is. Um, it's a state of relying on God on a daily basis, day by day basis. And if you're not able to do that, you will rely on the world system. And that's not the promised land. 
there are many people who are who are successful by worldly standards they have a lot of money they have a lot of resources they have all the fancy things and people christians will look at them and think okay they must be in a promised land and that's not true because they're relying on the world system the moment they stop compromising for the things of this world and and uh falling into idol worship they will lose everything they will lose everything because god isn't with them and so the promised land is a lot different than many people think it is but the wilderness is a state of god stripping you away from things so that you can learn how to rely on him only he's not going to take people into a promised land unless they have made him the, the center right they've made him uh their source for everything and so if you're in a wilderness season this is most likely what it looks like for you but the quicker you allow god to strip you of the things from your past the quicker you allow God to strip you of the identity that the world has given you and allow God to place a new identity on you, the, the person that he's called you to be before the day that you were born, it's really unbecoming. It's a state it's a state of unbecoming of what the world has said you are, right? Um, then you'll shift immediately into your promised land. And the promised land is a place that God has already prepared for you. It already exists, by the way, flowing of milk and honey. And being in the promised land, I do want to explain to you, it doesn't mean that, um, how do I phrase this? So being in a promised land, it doesn't mean that you're in a promised land because you have money, because you have um, a nice house, because you have a nice car, because you have nice clothes, because you have fancy things. Those things are a byproduct of being in the promised land. The promised land that God has uh, prepared for you is a mindset. It's a way of thinking. Because you've allowed God to strip you of the things of your past that were not serving you, that were keeping you in bondage, that were holding you down, and you've allowed him to place a new identity on you in Christ Jesus, you've allowed him to define your character, and you are relying on him on a daily basis. You've made him your source for everything. He will give you those things as a byproduct of you just being faithful, obedient, and making him the source of everything and seeking his kingdom. Because he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these things will be added unto you. That's really just what it means. It means at everything, every turn in life, every second in life, you're putting God first. And when you're not doing that, you turn around, you repent, and you put him back at the center of everything. That's simply what it means. The promised land is a state of just simply being fully who it is that God has put you on this earth to be. And it's not allowing um, yourself to be weighed down or, um, yes, not allowing yourself to be weighed down by bondages, things of this world, not conforming to this world. We even have a scripture that says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is what this this process is about going from Egypt to the wilderness, the promised land. You're not, you're allowing the world to make you conform. I can't speak today, <laughs> but you're allowing God to continuously transform you by the renewing of your mind. And when you're in the promised land, you're able to help others go through this process. Let me know if that makes sense. Um, so I love you all. What I'm going to do, and I, I didn't want to share this on this message, but what I'm going to do and I'm going to be doing this this year, is I'm going to be um, releasing a couple containers for you all to help you move throughout each phase of this, the uh, Egypt, Wilderness, and Promised Land. And I do have the Promised Land Mentorship, and it does help you move through this. The videos are on demand, but what I mean by releasing a couple containers, I really want to work with you all um, very individualized on this on a more um, specific level because the Lord has really made this a part of my calling. So I'm really excited to share more of what that will look like with you all in the near future, but I do want to release a few things to you all this year in 2023 to help you move throughout these phases because it's it's a it's something that pulls on my heartstring, <laughs> especially when I see people who go through these phases and um, they stay stuck because we've seen this happen throughout biblical history. Um, someone can stay in an Egypt season for the entirety of their life. They'd stay in bondage for the entirety of their life. They'd stay in addiction for the entirety of their life and they'd die in an Egypt season. It's really sad to see. God can move someone out of an Egypt season into the wilderness and they don't ever move on to their promised land. They stay in the wilderness season for the rest of their life, the rest of their life. And it's really sad to see. So I really want to work with you all more closely on um, transitioning through these seasons onto your promised land because it's what God wants for you. It's what he desires for you. It's why he put, this was his original design. This is what he originally wanted for us. 
So I really want to work more closely with you all in that. I'll share with you more in the near future on what that will look like. But I pray that this really resonated with a lot of you. I pray that this really helped a lot of you. If you want more context on it, there's a Promise Land roadmap you can download. There is the Promise Land mentorship you can join. And I made it so that most people are able to join. Um, and there's more information on that below. If you were led to sow into this ministry because you are believing in God for a harvest on a very specific thing, this is the perfect place to do it. There's many testimonies where God has broken um, people away from financial bondage. God has freed people from debt. God has um, moved on people's behalf concerning non-monetary things. Like maybe God has um, healed someone. God has fixed relational issue, whatever it is that you're believing in God for, a harvest for, um, put it in the, the message and tie scripture to it because that's what I do for my specific seeds. And it um, works wonders when we stand on the word of God and the principles of God because it will never come back void. So I love you all. I always encourage you to share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you're locked in and you're helping others receive the same revelations that you've received from this message. I'm always praying for you and I'll talk with you in the next message.